Welcome to Rose Red Homestead. I'm standing here at the edge of our property under this beautiful purple robe locust. If you look right here, you will see probably one of the very last blossoms on this purple robe locust for this season. A couple of weeks ago, this tree was absolutely loaded with these blossoms. The bees love these and they have a very beautiful perfume. This tree was here when we moved into our property about eight years ago. And this tree is one of the reasons that uh, sent me to do a little bit more research on locust trees. And over the course of the next couple of years, I read a lot and studied a lot, and I learned how to propagate locust trees, particularly from seed. And that's what we will be doing in this video when we continue in just a moment. of trees are all black locusts, but that is not what was here when we first moved in. It was a whole line of what I called trash trees. They were just ugly and awful. So after a couple of years, Jim and I got so disgusted with the trees that he just took the tractor and pulled them all out, thankfully. And that is when I really learned how to propagate locust trees from seed. And all of these trees right here that you see have been started from seed. Now this tree in particular, Right here, this is probably our best of the trees that were started. And now these have been in the ground um, just barely starting this spring. It has been five years since we planted these. And look how tall this is. It's between 15 and 20 feet tall in just five years. So these are very fast growing. They also have very sharp thorns. And um, one of the reasons that I planted these is because like the purple robe locusts, they have those cluster blossoms, only in these trees, they're way at the top of the tree. And in some parts of the country, these black locusts are a prime source for honey of, and honeybees. And so that's why I put them in. But we probably have about, I believe we have 12 in this row. And they're just starting their fifth year in the ground, so they're doing fine. Some of them, of course, are doing a little bit better than others. This one looks like it needs uh, some help of some kind. Now we're going to take a walk through the yard and I'm going to show you about three or four more trees. And uh, then we'll go in the kitchen and start uh, working with the seeds. This black locust is just starting its third year in the ground. And we're excited for this one to grow. We're wanting to put more shade trees in our property, um, especially those that will attract uh, pollinators because it gets so hot here in the summer, we're wanting to cool our yard as much as possible. Now we're just gonna step right over here. This little one is a honey locust tree. Now this one is the very same age as the one that we just looked at, but obviously honey locusts are much more slow growing than the black locust are. So I want to show you what a honey locust tree looks like that is full grown. So we'll step this direction. This honey locust tree was on the property when we moved here. This is my favorite tree on our property. The honeybees absolutely love this. And in just a moment, I'm gonna show you uh, one of the little blossoms. It's almost too late. The blossoms have all shriveled and are finished, but this one is a very different kind of a blossom. It is not the cluster blossom that the purple robe locust and the black locust um, use, but the bees just get all over this. And one of my favorite things to do uh, when this tree is in bloom is to come and stand right here under this tree and smell the beautiful fragrance of those blossoms and listen to the hum of thousands of bees as they carry away the pollen and the nectar from this honey locust. And it just is a thrilling moment because to me it is just watching nature in action. And I just love that kind of thing. So we're now going to go into the kitchen and start working with the seeds so I can show you how to start these beautiful trees from seed. 
So we're back in the kitchen now, and um, here are the seeds right here, and let's get a close-up of these seeds. These are the honey locusts. They're a little bit larger. And then I pulled some pods off of the black locust trees. Those beautiful white cluster blossoms turn into these pods, and then the pods twist open and fling the seeds out when it's successful. Now, if these little pods remind you of anything, perhaps green beans or peas, that's because these locust trees are in the same family. They are in the legume family. So let's take a look at these seeds. I think I'm going to try to do some of these seeds. And so if we can just break some of them loose from their pods here. They're very tiny. I, I ultimately bought some, originally bought some from a nursery. I had them order them for me because I couldn't find what I wanted online. But if we can get a few of these, and then we can compare with the ones that I got from the nursery just to see. So there's four little ones. And I have tons. Now, here are the ones that I got from the nursery, so let's compare. So these might be just a little bit larger, but there are some here. All right, so. Here's what has to happen with these seeds. So I've cleared away the pods and I took quite a few more of the um, homegrown seeds out of the way. And um, Jim is going to tilt the camera now so that we can get a close up here and see uh, these seeds. These are the ones that came out of the seeds uh, pods and then these are the ones that I took from the, uh, bought from the nursery and then these are the honey locusts. So what has to happen to these seeds first is that um, if we just tried to plant these, just put them in a pot with soil, they would never grow. And the reason is because on these locust trees, the seed coat is so tough and so hard that the little embryo on the inside of the seed can't break through it. No water can get in. What has to happen is it has got to go through the digestive system of usually birds. Birds will eat these seeds and it passes through their digestive system and then they poop it out. And so the seed is encrusted in that little, that little dab of fertilizer and it um, then drops on the ground and then it will grow because the digestive system of the birds has softened the outside um, of the seed coat. Now, I don't have any captive birds in the house that we can do that with, so we have got to figure out another way, which actually I did. I used boiling water instead. And so what we are going to do is um, drop these seeds in these pint jars right here. So there are the honey locusts and they are the larger seeds. And then I'm going to just tear this towel in half so I don't, because I think I want to just do a little experiment and see how uh, the two different types of the black locust seeds will do. So I'm going to put the black locust seeds right here and those were the ones from the nursery. And then in the smaller jar, I'm going to put the smaller seeds that we took right out of the pods. And then I have over here on the stove, I have some boiling water. So I'm just going to fill these jars up with, oh, probably about half a cup of water that has been boiling. Now, this will not cook the beans. All this is going to do is soften the seed coat. And oof, we're going to, while these are cooling, we're going to walk back outside and, oh, it's very windy out there. We'll see if this works. We're going to walk outside and I want to show you a line of trees that have just been in the ground for a year. In fact, not even quite a year. But they have gone um, through their first winter and of the 20 trees that we planted, uh, we only lost two. And because it's so windy outside, that means that the sound may be a little bit garbled when we're out there. So let me just tell you that um, I decided instead of, it's in the same line as the 12 uh, black locust trees that were in the front. These are now along our, the property line in the back. And um, I chose to do honey locusts instead of black locusts. And here's the reason why. That these pods, 
that the black locust produces its seeds in are very attractive to cows and horses, but they are poisonous. So it's not a good idea to plant black locusts where horses and cows might get a hold of them. And um, we have new neighbors that just live along this property line, and the first thing they did was put in a corral and have, I think, a horse or two and some cows over there. So I, we decided not to plant black locusts along there. We instead planted the uh, honey locusts. So let's go take a look and see how they are doing after a year. And when we come back, these will probably be cool enough that we can then work with. So we're standing out here right on the boundary of our property. Uh, this is our neighbor's property, and along this line where you see all the flags going clear up, we have a, we planted about 20 trees. So the trees are about uh, 10 feet inside our property line, and here is a little year-old honey locust in the shade of this weed. <laughs> so, um, and then notice that we have chopped and dropped all the weeds through here to give sort of a ground cover to protect the soil just a little bit. So every flag uh, denotes another tree. Now here is one that isn't doing quite as well, but it's still a beautiful green color, so it's going to be just fine. And we're not going to walk down and see all of them, but you can see the flags as they're set up down there, and we have the drip going all the way down as well. And then the neighbor's corral is right there, so that's the one we're trying to protect. So let's go back in the house and check on our seeds. When we came back in the house, the jars were still hot. And so we've given it probably an extra half hour to cool down. And now the seeds are very cool and we can work with them. Now, um, essentially what we have done here, we have scarified. That is the biological term for when you have to do something to the outside of the seed coat in order to make it so that the embryo can get out. So we have scarified these seeds using boiling water. So now the next step is to roll them in uh, paper towels. So I'm just going to uh, dump them through this strainer. And I have a couple of paper towels here that I'm going to then line these seeds up just right down the middle. And now that they are scarified, they should imbibe water just fine. So I'm going to roll these in a little roll and bend them in half and put them back in this pint jar. I'm going to put a skewer through this so that they don't sink down in the water. And then I'm just going to put some water in the bottom of the jar. And that water will wick up through the paper towel and moisten it up and over the top so that the whole thing is going to stay wet. And then um, in a couple of days, we should be able to come back and check. And uh, by that time, the, um, all of the ones that actually did get scarified should be showing little baby roots coming out of the uh, spot where they come out. And so we will come back at that point in time. Oop, I lost some. Let me put those back in. Now, I imagine with all of these seeds, we will probably only yield 10 or maybe 15 really good plants. I've had these seeds for a long time, more than five years, and so the um, viability rate has decreased over that time. So again, this is just going to go over this skewer right down into the water. Now this is wicking up, it's already wet up and over the top. Now I'm not necessarily labeling these jars because uh, of the size of the seed, I know which is which, and then especially once as the first leaves come out, it will be very easy to tell as you will see when we get to that point. So there's that jar ready. Now we're going to do the same thing to the nursery seeds. from the black locust. And it will be very obvious when we come back in a couple of days 
to check these out, we will compare the size to um, the original beans and we'll see which ones have been able to imbibe water. And it's so fun to see the little roots starting out at the bottom. It just gives you such a sense of accomplishment knowing that you have been successful in figuring out the secret to these trees and knowing how to grow them from seed. And then last, we will do these seeds that we pulled from um, the actual pod. I will be so excited if we get some trees from these little homegrown seeds. Okay, so here we are. And I'm going to put these over in a, a, on a glass table in the, in the bay window where I have several other plants going. And we will come back in a couple of days and open these up and check. And we'll bring you back at that time so that we can then see what has happened and whether or not we're ready to go to the next step. So we'll see you in a couple of days. It has been five days since we scarified our um, locust tree seeds, so we're going to see what happens. Now, you'll notice I'm in a different place. This is in my bee lab. This is where I used to do some scientific work with bees, including um, inseminating uh, queen bees. You see some honey boxes here, and the extractor is behind us. But this is where I do a lot of dirty work and science work and that kind of thing. So I brought our jars from in the house out here so we could take a look. Now I have been checking these and um, I can tell you that um, these seeds are showing their age because they are not as viable as they were. And I think I mentioned earlier that these are, the seeds are about five years old. Uh, don't worry about the brown color, that happens. It takes some of the color from the seeds and wicks it away. Now, um, these are the black locust. You can see the roots that are forming. These, um, like this one and this one, these were the original size. So some of them did not get scarified, but those that did are putting out really nice roots. So we have those that we can work with. And I'm gonna get the second one. and do this one as well. And we're going to pick the best one. The best several to actually do the carry to the next step. So we can see that um, some of these are even turning green because they were in a little bit too much light. But still we just have the root so far, the first leaf, well, that may be a first leaf that's coming out, so we'll see about that one. So these are the black locust, and I'm going to open up the black locust ones that we took from our own tree. These are much, much smaller, and they weren't doing very much. I think we might finally have a little root, however. No, oh, it looks, no, it looks like there that we don't. So it is a good thing that we went ahead and planted some uh, that we bought from the nursery. So none of these have sprouted. Well, that's a little bit of a disappointment. Okay, so we'll just discard this one. Now we'll um, open up the the two honey locusts. 
set this over here. And it's the honey locust that I was really disappointed in because usually I have very strong germination from these honey locusts, but I just think that these are quite old. And so even though they have swollen, this was the original size, this one was the original size, so you can see that these have swollen, but they're just, they've imbibed water, but they're not doing very much. So there's a few that have been putting out roots, but that's about it for that one. Here's another one. Not very many. So these are showing their age. Well, I guess like all of us. Imbibed water, there's the original size. All right, so those are gonna go in the trash. All right, now I'm gonna show you how I plant these. I like to start them off in a smaller container before I relocate them to um, a gallon size. Now, I have this fancy little rack, and you certainly do not need a fancy rack like this. Um, <clears throat> but I have grown a lot of trees, as you can see, and I have filled this row, this is seven and seven more. I filled it up a, a, a little bit with the soil that I'm going to use. Now, this is the soil. This is a mixture of our, this is a mixture of our native soil and some leaf mold. So I'm only going to plant seven of each. That's really all I need and most likely all of them will not even come up. So if we can get five of each from this planting, I'm going to be very happy. So what I do is I take one of the um, seeds that has a nice root started and I just put it, you can see how deep this is, and I just put it right on the top and then I will take more of the potting soil and fill it about an inch more full. Okay, so there's one and I like this one. So we'll put this in here and fill that up a little bit more. And then we'll take these outside and give them a good watering. All right, so those are seven of the honey locust. Now we will do the black locust. We have lots of good possibilities here. I'm actually not gonna take the ones that have the longest root on them. I'm going to um, probably take some that are sort of in the middle. So this is going to be the first one that I'm going to plant. And I'm going to drop it down so the root faces downward. Cover it with a little soil. We are going to plant them in the fall. Probably around October when the soil is still warm and they can adjust a little bit and then they'll overwinter and then the ones that survive the winter are the ones that are really going to be the strong ones. Okay, so we have planted 14 tree seeds right here and we will be back probably in three weeks or so as soon as first leaves are showing so that we can show you the progress on these little trees. So I will see you then. Hi and welcome back. So here are our little trees. It has been longer than I anticipated. Instead of three weeks, it's been more like five weeks. I injured my finger a couple of weeks ago on a hedge trimmer and um, I'm just now back where I can work with it a little bit. So if Jim will come close, I'll show you what the results are on these. So um, after we went off camera, in the bee lab when I was doing the planting, I had some extra soil, and so I did plant uh, these two rows of extras. So the outside edges are the honey locust, and the two inside are the, the black locust. And with the, with the honey locust, we got 100%. We had 14 
um, actually sprout and grow. And with the black locust, we only had, out of 14, we only had 10. But I'm not going to use that many trees anyway, so I'm just going to uh, plant these today, show you how to transplant them until my soil runs out, and then we're going to call it good. So this is what I do. This morning I mixed um, over here in the wheelbarrow. This is a mixture of our native soil, which as you can probably see in the background is red from the Navajo sandstone um, mountains that are just right there. And uh, we're mostly sand and some silt and very little clay. Um, and so because water goes through this so very fast, I did add a little bit of organic material uh, using coconut coir. But that's all that is in here. When you plant trees, you pretty much want to use the soil that they're going to be ultimately planted in. And so this is pretty close to what they're going to be planted in by this coming October. So I've used these before, and uh, so these are just um, recycling them. And I'll just put about, probably about three scoops of this soil in. And so here we go. Now, um, with trees, trees are really tough, and I'm going to be selective in what I'm going to be planting. I'm going to select the ones that I think are the very best, because I'm probably not going to use all of these. So this is probably the most healthy one. And it's up about a good three inches right here. And um, these all produce a very nice tap root. Now, I plant bare root. And so in order to get that bare root, I can just squeeze these little containers and then turn them upside down and you can do the same thing to paper cups or whatever and just knock it out and then here is the tap root and it has some little side roots I'm just going to put this soil right in here too and then I'll just take an empty little cone and make a hole right in the pot makes it very convenient and then I want to plant this right up to this point right here which is where exactly where it was in the pot in the starting pot and then I just pinch that soil together and that's all there is to it so this one is now planted and ready and um, we will grow these probably through October. And I'm just putting them right here behind this tree. Uh, they'll have a little bit of morning sun. And then in the afternoon, uh, they're shaded by this big poplar tree. We have about 10 of these great big poplar trees here. And uh, so we'll have a lot of nice shade for it in the heat of the afternoon. But I want to um, harden them off by keeping them outside so that when we get ready to actually put them in the ground, they will be ready to go. We won't have to harden them off anymore. So this time I'm going to take a black locust. Now the good thing about these is that um, these have been down on the ground under the tree so that they have gotten the uh, sprinkler, the water from our sprinkler system. And the rabbits don't bother these. And so that is really, really good. And I'm making the hole. And I'm just going to check the root on this. Looks good. We've got a lot of good roots here. And I know exactly where the dirt came up to in the beginning. Trees are really, really tough. Most of the trees that we get to plant here, fruit trees and whatever, are bare root. And so I usually like to pretty much plant bare root. I'll do a couple more. I get a um, great deal of pleasure out of doing this. It is so um, fulfilling to be able to grow these from seed. All right, I'm going to pick another one of these honey locusts. I think I'll do this one. 
and I'm just squeezing this. Now you don't have to plant them bare root. I prefer to check the roots to be sure everything is okay at this stage. So look how good that one is. So this is the point right here where I want to plant them to here. So I'm making my hole right in the center. And this whole thing fits just right down in there. And then I just pinch them together. We'll probably have 10 or 12 when we're done. And I'm not going to plant that many in our yard, but it gives me a few that I can give to friends because I really enjoy doing that as well. So I'll plant one more of the black locust, and I'm going to hold this one up to the camera so that you can tell the difference between the black locust and the honey locust. Notice how rounded the leaves are compared to how the honey locust has the long leaves with the little tiny leaflets on the side. So it's very easy to distinguish between these two trees. So we'll just go ahead and plant this one now. So squeezing it to release it. And making the hole. The roots look really good if you can see that. I'm just going to slip that right down in. This one should make a good one. Now on all of these you can see the first leaves here's the first true leaves right here but this is the original seed that seed split in two and opened up and the stem came out from the middle so this part right here used to be the seed and these are the first true leaves on this one a little more difficult to tell on these here's one if you can see down in there I'm just going to pull it out. Well, actually, you can see it on this one right here. So these right here, this used to be the seed itself, and these are the first true leaves. So I will finish the rest off camera, and we will be back shortly. So the last step in these beautiful, freshly planted trees right here is to water them in. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to take a, my hose, and on the shower, setting. Just gently shower these with water to water them in. The soil was moist when we started, but I do want to water them in. The coconut coir is really doing a good job. You can see standing water in some of these right now. That never happens when we just do our regular sand. But it won't take long for those to just completely drain and be dry again. Um, so these will stay probably right here in this position under this beautiful tree until October. So right now it's the middle of July, August, September, October. So probably about three months. And they'll be about this tall. And then we will plant them in the fall. And all we do is just dig a hole and just put the whole thing in. I don't go bare root from here. I plant this whole pot of soil. Not the pot itself, but um, the whole um, root ball right down in a hole. And that's all there is to it. Growing trees from seed is very satisfying. And it's extremely economical as well. Every time I do a new batch of trees, that reduces the amount per tree since I bought the seeds originally. I'm down now to about four dollars per tree. So that's not too bad for these beautiful shade trees that also attract bees. So thanks so much for joining us and I hope that you have enjoyed learning how to plant locust trees from seed. And we'll see you next time. <music>